this is Jane Lowe and I'm at Tech Week 2024 here at Marina Bay Sands and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Syed Jeffrey uh, from Habit Bank right, uh, to join us uh, to talk about phishing and deep fakes and voice cloning. So thank you so much uh, for your time today. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, Syed, um, you are the head of uh, cyber defense and uh, offensive security at Habit Bank, one of you know a financial services uh, company. And uh, when it comes to phishing and financial services, you know it's not just about scams, is it? It's about also ransomware, disruption of services, espionage. So is that uh, your experience uh, being a you know cyber security uh, professional in Habit Bank? Is that what you see like the phishing motivations are? Yes, for the motivation regarding the disruption, destruction, and distribution of the service is very important. In terms of uh, the motivation of the a threat actor, they are more interested in financial institution because they know that that financial institution will pay them the money. Because of the reputational impact, because of the insurance policy, the financial institution won't, uh, won't get compromised and won't don't want to publish their information over such forums where they need to compromise their privacy. So in that case, financial institution pays to the perpetrator and the intruder that much of amount. So they are more interested in financial institution and the users of those financial institutions like customers who are the financial institution customer. If they compromise the account of the end individual or the customer, so they can threaten that financial institution that we have a list of customers and the card numbers and we have compromised that, that, that asset. So in that case, the bank is more concerned about their customer privacy. There's a lot of, uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of motivations there for, for the threat actors and uh, why financial services is such an attractive sector to attack, isn't it? It's money and also confidential information that they can harvest. And so, exactly. When they compromise the user, they, they, they are interested in two things, like the money and the confidentiality of the user, like the bank statement, what is the balance, what is my actual statement is all about, what I have earned so far as an individual. So they are more interested in getting your balances out of your account and more most importantly the, the financial aspect they need to have the financial uh, impact and uh, recently as per the case study what I remembered the financial institution got uh, 927 million dollar given to the hackers where in terms of the customer data privacy where the customer information got lost and they earned around 900 million dollar out of it Wow, it's a very profitable business, uh, a sector for the threat actors to target, isn't it? Yeah, it is It is one of the quickest business what I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> right, okay. Yes, so earlier we were saying that, you know, uh, some of the uh, motivations could be, uh, well, phishing motivations could be uh, uh, financial scams, could be uh, ransomware, could be destruction of services. And you pointed out in your presentation, espionage as well, yes. right? Um, and what do we know about all these... Um, uh, threat actors, you know, they say that when it comes to phishing and AI, which is a topic of your presentation, it is uh, putting the tools of nation state actors into average uh, cyber criminals, right? Exactly. exactly. So what, what, what have you seen so far? Is it uh, making uh, phishing a lot easier for the cyber criminals? Uh, you have uh, absolutely pronounced a very good word like called threat actor. So the one who has the capability and most importantly, the determination makes him the threat actor. Nowadays, a person cap having a capability of laptop and internet can become a hacker. Before 10 years, it was very difficult for a person to become a hacker because he needs to learn different programming languages. He needs to under understand the concept of programming. And now, AI has helped to make a program for you. AI has uh, helped you to, to transcript all the things to, to actually trick the user. It also uh, it also helps the user an intruder to make a sophisticated email, to write down what the needs of the user, to make it more convincing to the user. And for for instance, I have observed for last one year that there are a lot of threat actors coming in the in on the ground, and they, they are new. What we have observed that how they are new, they are just using the simple techniques. They use a sophisticated phishing email that cannot be detected by the spam filters and can be landed within an organization and they got compromised the user by just attempting to 
perform the ransom attack, attempting to do a fraudulent activity, scams user, and all the fraud frauds related to the cyber activities. We have observed that in the last one year, the threat actor count has increased to hundreds. And from different origins, like not it's from Russia or China, but now those countries which we haven't seen threat actors are coming from those areas. And we need to perform the geofencing against those countries which we are not expecting them that there, there would be a rising of those threat actors from such countries who have we haven't observed for last 10 years, we have observed in the one year. So phishing as a tool, uh, sorry, phishing as a service, right, has been around for quite some time. Are you seeing that these uh, services are, you know, being distributed uh, more cheaply, quicker, and to a wider sort of uh, interested uh, part, criminal parties? Exactly. You really uh, pitch up the exact thing that uh, the hackers are actually, uh, first of all, I, I let you know that this was this service was previously sold on dark web. Now it is sailing on the surface web. It's available on the internet and it's available for those users who doesn't know the technicalities of the system. So how it is possible that whether that there was a dilemma we used to have that we need to go to dark web to find such services. Now we don't need to go to dark web. The services are available on surface web. Uh, and the user just need to pay some hundreds of dollars to compromise thousands of dollars of organization. And it is very embarrassing for the organization. And it's a rep rep you, you can see that a reputation loss, a financial loss is there. But for the organization, they, they have the prestige of doing work. And just by doing the surface web, they have the ability to, to perform that attack against uh, such services. Yeah, the victim pool is uh, been uh, broadened and exactly. expanded. Uh, Exactly. Uh, and also with the chat GPT and Gen AI, uh, not to pick on chat GPT, but with Gen AI, you uh, mentioned earlier that uh, the threat actors are also using the latest AI tools to craft uh, quite uh, convincing emails, but also translating, you know, languages into into foreign languages that they may not, you know, even speak. So exactly. that's really expanding the victim's pool, isn't it? Absolutely. Earlier, it was. It was uh, easy to detect those perpetrators uh, by just spelling mistakes, language change, dot, comma, colons, and most importantly, the way and the behavior they communicate with. But now with the help of AI, they have the capability to, to make you a very convincing email in your language and a very sophisticated email sends to the user asking them and it's not an urgency it's it's previously we 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 pick up some data set data data points like urgency spelling mistakes uh, the the way the email was written uh, in a format so we understand the format now ai has just wipe it out all the thing the email will be convincing it won't be having any spelling mistake anymore it will be a sophisticated email a very formal pattern will be written so it's very difficult for a user to understand and and uh, and can be tricked using such emails yeah and now with gen ai and your presentation earlier voice cloning right is raising the game even further right for the threat actors yeah the game has become easier for the threat actor by just cloning the voice because for the non technical user he only sees he only he only listen the voice note then that non techy user cannot go in deep by examining the voice notes, by just doing the forensic of those voices, they cannot synthesize, they cannot assess the pitch of the voices. But it's very difficult for a normal user to understand, to, to listen, that what now the AI is actually making money out of it. Before that, there was count in millions of dollars of losses. Now the count will increase to billions of dollars by using AI. And using those sophisticated techniques, I am just accumulating the amount of the, the cost and the losses will be increased to billions of dollars. Um, how easy is it for them to do this voice cloning? I think you mentioned like you need only 30 seconds. Is you need only 30 seconds of a laptop, an internet, and a browser having a web page open. Three, three things and that's it. A simple voice note of a person who will speak with you with a 30 second. So the 30 second voice note can, can actually capture the whole life saving of a person. Can you imagine that 30 second voice note can, can actually uh, capturing the life saving of a person like thousands of dollars, they can, they can, it can be vanished from the account of a user by just 
perpetrating the voice of a mother, perpetrating the voice of the family, perpetrating the voice of a person in, in terms that he's stuck in a situation, he's stuck in, in some type of kidnapping or somewhere, and the money gone. So is it like a f spear phishing then in that uh, uh, voice cloning is being applied to or can it be like mass sort of uh, phishing attacks? Threat actors are using this uh, spear phishing technique where they specifically target the specific individual of an organization and they deliberately send emails and they, they know that this is our target and they, they work on the target, they see the background check, they saw their LinkedIn profile and they find the interest and hobbies in the Facebook and their Insta reels, they, they likes and dislikes and once they do all the homework, then they prepare a, uh, and this, uh, they create a custom-made scenario for those in the specific individual in order to hit directly and uh, make a massive breach out of it. Um, this is something that you didn't really touch on very deeply at your presentation, deep fakes now. So applying deep fakes uh, or complementing or supplementing voice cloning with deep fakes makes it even more more sophisticated attack, isn't it, or convincing attack? Definitely. Once the voice is cloned, so the, maybe the family would ask that I need to see the proof of evidence. I need to see the video. So using deep fake, it can also be made because of the because we have published our lot of pictures on Facebook, and hackers only need 15 pictures of an individual to make a very, very, very similar clone of video of an individual. 15 picture can make your video clone. Can you imagine? So those 15 picture we can also make a voy video note of a user that I am stuck, I am here, I am, I am, I am in trouble, please help me. So that voice note for a non-techie user or, or a victim can, 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 can actually capture his life saving. So not video, so 15 pictures, not 15 videos. No, no, 15 pictures only, pictures. You, you publish thousands of pictures on the Facebook, I'm talking about 15 pictures. Wow, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, so you mentioned earlier that it's difficult for an average user to detect, you know, whether the voice is a, you know, synthesized voice, AI voice. What about deep fakes? Is it easy for an average user to, you know, detect a deep fake? No, it's, it's still a challenge for the user to detect the deep fake. Actually, we need to educate more to the user. As the technology is evolving more, so we need to educate people more. You know that we, we go to the schools, then college, and then university. Why? Because to get more knowledge out of it. So in the in the field of cybersecurity, we need to not stick with the traditional uh, rules. We need to educate more to the people in terms of AI, deep fake, machine learning, and uh, and the dark side of the AI. I must say. So what can uh, ordinary users do? There are a lot of open source tools, tools available, like Deep Face Life. The face life actually tool helps to to determine the the clone and the original face of a person. Similarly, deep fake voice clone actually examine the clone and the original voice of a person by examining the pitch, synthesizes the speech, simplicity, audacity. It can it can actually compare two voice notes and let you know that whether this is the clone one or the original one. Right, and you, earlier you also mentioned the potential damages uh, with this uh, increased sophistication can run into more than uh, well. Now we're talking about hundreds of millions, but it can run to billions. Yes, it can the run damage. in billions. Because the first attack of voice clone took place in 2019, where the CEO voice was synthesized in a in an energy sector in UK, and uh, it uh, the $300,000 uh, got out of it. Because the CEO said that I need immediately money from the CFO, and the, and the financial controller just sent the money to the account mentioned by the CEO a voice. So that was uh, the incident where, which happened earlier in 2019. And that was the first catch and the, that, that was the first voice clone even detected in later 2019. Oh, so this is five years ago and this is just using voice cloning without deep fakes. Exactly. You can imagine that five years ago, $300,000. It's not a very big amount, but it's not a very less amount as well. So five years ago, $300,000 in a single 30 second voice note captures. Now after five years back, you can imagine that it can be a uh, number game and it can be more like three, more $30,000, $300,000 maybe. Right, yeah. So uh, basically you are saying that, you know, for ordinary users, we need to raise our awareness that these uh, techniques are getting more and more sophisticated. It's no longer just emails, right, black, and right, uh, black and white, but it's also voice and face, 
right, to make it more convincing and to persuade you to give out some of your personal information. Obviously, obviously, and the systems where the where the uh, even the second part is that vendor also needs to jump in and identify. They need to rebuild their software, redesign their software in order to to accumulate such pattern, to incorporate such patterns in their software and identify such uh, uh, sub D fake uh, system. In uh, the, uh, they sh if they embed such D fake detection technologies in their existing system, it would be easier for the clients to detect uh, the clone voices, deep fake and uh, advanced phishing sites. So vendor also needs to jump in and play their role in that area as well. Right, okay. So uh, yeah, so thank you so much for your time, Syed, to, uh, to share with us you know, on phishing and uh, voice cloning and deep fakes and how uh, the game is being raised even further by uh, Gen AI. But one last uh, question, if I may. Um, one last tip for our users, if you can provide any. I just want to tell the user that today, this is the war with, with the technology versus technology. Before that, it was a war with technology with the people. Now we are, we are in the war situation with technology versus technology. So you have to be aware that technology which you are in hand, we, you need to very much careful what you are actually publishing, what you, what you are sharing over the internet is very, very important. That what information you are publishing it over the internet is most crucial. You need to focus on that information. Don't undeliberately publish that information which might cause you a massive disasters and losses yeah that's a very important point actually uh, you know we share quite a bit of information about ourselves on social media and uh, there is always a risk that threat actors right can use those information and exploit any sort of uh, personal data to conduct a campaign against you in a spear phishing campaign yes yes so normally when people actually upload some content and they thought that it is private to me that is not actually private that has already gone to the cloud so uh, this is my humble request to all the users as a as a influencer in cybersecurity i must recommend that people should not upload massive data on the internet all that like family gathering individuals and uh, the interest and like dislike this could create a profile of an individual to become victim and and due to uncertain situations that can actually create a lot of impact to an individual so when uh, be aware when you are publishing information over the internet it should be kept remain with you it should be with the limited group or the audience you are sharing with and do not share your information with those who you don't know who certainly adds you on Facebook, LinkedIn, or any other Facebook social media, you uh, and you think that I I don't know that person, and he's asking me, and he's he's actually exploring my personal data. So please be aware from such users; they are actually perpetrators, and they try to get information from you as as much as they can. Thank you so much for that very very important tip. I think it's a very um, uh, crucial to remind us that you know in this uh, digital age a lot of the data that we have uh, uh, privacy matters but you know once it's in the cloud privacy may not quite hold absolutely exactly so thank you so much for your time again thank you very much Jaden thank you